with teaching the youth. Seminal radio DJ, artist, producer, and TV host Mikey Dredd may be best known in the U.S. for his work with old-school punk heroes The Clash, but in his Jamaican and adopted British home. His legacy is seen as much more than that. Born in 1954, in Port Antonio, Jamaica, Michael Campbell came to national prominence in the 70s with a weekly radio show on JBC, Jamaican Broadcasting Company. Taking the name Mikey Dredd, the DJ's four-hour spot, which he called Dredd at the controls, was a revelation. Jamaican radio had not revolved around local talent but rather imported music mostly from the United States. Even as the Jamaican recording industry had flourished across the 60s, this aversion to local music had not diminished. Some of the labels had overcome this handicap through a pay-to-play system that wasn't exactly payola, but a system of advertising. Thus Studio One, Treasure Isle, and the island's other larger labels would buy blocks of advertising time, during which they would play their new releases. This led to advertising coming solely from those labels with adequate cash and with only two radio stations servicing the island, there were few alternatives to reaching national audiences. Dred's radio show changed that. He not only featured Jamaican music, but played the hottest new songs within days, and even hours, of their pressing. The DJ also knew his musical history, and one of his favorite tactics was to spin the original classic songs whose rhythms were currently mashing up the dance halls. But Dredd didn't stop with anarchic patter and hip music. His jingles which were recorded at King Tabby's studio were as groundbreaking as the show itself. The DJ employed whichever vocalists happened to be in the studio at the time, including two schoolgirls, Althea Forrest and Donna Reed, who Dredd soon began to favor. The pair had recently cut a song with the production team The Mighty Two, as a feminine retort to DJ Trinity's hit three-piece suit, which Dredd utilized for a jingle. In response, The Mighty Two released the cut Uptown Top Ranking toward the end of 1977, which went to the top of the charts in Jamaica and Britain. Dredd seemed to have the magic touch and so he took a shot at repeating his on-air success in the recording studio with the help of Lee Perry. The resulting debut cut Dredd of the controls quickly became the DJ's anthem. It was swiftly followed by Schoolgirls and the potent Home Guard. More singles followed, including A Clutch with The Mighty Two and Rootsman Revival for Sonia Pottinger. Meanwhile, Dredd's radio show continued on, delighting audiences and infuriating the DJ's conservative bosses at JBC. By 1979, however, Dredd had tired of the constant battles at the station and resigned. He initially took a job as an engineer at Treasure Isle, but soon linked up with producer Carlton Patterson, for whom he cut the Barber Saloon haircut single. The pair also joined forces behind the recording desk, and together produced Ray Eye's hit Weatherman Skank. Sandinista, before the year was out, Dredd had launched his own label, Dredd of the Controls, which was also chosen as the title of his debut album and DATC's first release. Its dub companion, African Anthem Dubwise, followed and featured dub remixes by King Tubby, Prince Jammy, and Dredd himself. Both albums featured excursions into deep dub and were cut up by jingles, spoken word segments, and toasts. As the new decade dawned, Dredd was on his way to England to open for The Clash's month-long tour. Afterward, all five went directly into the studio where Dredd oversaw the group's seminal, Bank Robber, single. The Clash had initially composed the song with a scar arrangement in mind, but Dredd would have none of that and publicly made his opinions clear. He then set about completely restructuring the song into a heavy dub monster. Dredd would also record his own DJ version of Bank Robber. Under the title, Rockers Galore UK Tour. The recording sessions moved to New York City where Dredd joined The Clash for their next single, a cover of Eddie Grant's Police On My Back as well as One More Time, a song that would soon appear on the band's Sandinista album. While there, Dredd recorded a single of his own, The Bruising, Rocker's Delight. More sessions were set up in Kingston, but were aborted because the group became the intended victim of every thief in town. The Clash disappointedly left for the safety of home and Dredd turned his attention back to DATC and his own recordings. Continuing to co-produce with Patterson, the label unleashed a string of crucial singles aimed at dance halls by such seminal artists as Sugar Minot, Edie Fitzroy, and Junior Mervyn. Dredd had maintained his relationship with King Tubby as well, and his remixes were often featured on the label's B-sides, another crucial element to the label's success. Meanwhile, Dredd also cut a number of his own singles, Proper Education, Love the Dread, and African Map, amongst them. These inevitably featured seminal dub remixes on the B-sides, created by Patterson, Dredd, or King Tubby, and often the records were pursued by fans exclusively for the dubs themselves. Dredd's new album, Beyond World War III, arrived in 1981. The next year brought Jungle Signal, which interspersed vocal offerings with great slabs of dub. The Jumping Master single was a major hit that same year, and Dub Merchant arrived soon after, boasting eight blinding remixes of that song. SWALK while Dredd and his music, label, and productions were having a massive influence on the UK scene, it was evident that Britain had also made an impact on Dredd. Lovers Rock had swept across the UK reggae scene, and in response, Dredd released Swalk, his third album of 1982. Not blessed with the sweetest of voices, Lover's Rock was perhaps not the wisest choice of style for Dredd's nasal tones. 
and the UK was undergoing another revolution as well, with the launch of the nation's fourth television channel, Channel 4. This station, although not government-controlled, was set up to cater to minority interests, a counterweight to the more broad-based entertainment offered by the nation's other independent station. ITV. Obviously the channel would offer music shows, but in keeping with its protocol, was looking at more alternative styles. Jamaican music was an obvious starting point, and a six-part series on the island musical scene, Deep Roots, was commissioned. The choice for narrator was equally obvious and Dredd accepted the offer. The following year, Dredd was back in front of the Channel 4 cameras as host of the Rockers Road Show, which featured live performances. Dredd himself provided the show's theme song, Roots and Culture. That song would be among the many highlights of 1984's Pave the Way. Self-produced and boasting some of the greatest musicians from both Jamaica and the UK, the album remains one of the most creative reggae records ever recorded. Assuming that's how it's categorized. Pave the Way Part 1 and 2 arrived the next year, but it would be five years before Dredd returned with another full-length album. His output of singles was even more sporadic, as he concentrated on television work. Happy Family By the time he returned to recording with Happy Family in 1989, most people had stopped paying attention. 1991's Portrait, another lover's rock set, fared little better, although its dub companion, African Anthem Revisited, suggested a return to stronger sounds, it failed to live up. In the new decade, Dredd briefly moved to the Ryko disc label and released Obsession in 1992, which found him still obsessed with lover's rock. That same year he was involved in X-Guns N' Roses guitarist Izzy Stradlin's debut album, Izzy Stradlin and the Juju Hounds. Another four years passed and in 1996 Dredd returned with Come to Mikey Dredd's dub party. Since then, he has again lapsed into a lengthy period of musical silence. In front of the cameras, however, Dredd has remained an important figure. Some of his projects include the video history Deep Roots Music and the British TV series Rockers International. In 1991, Ryko Disc released bestsellers, featuring early singles and the best cuts from albums. At the end of the 90s, Music Club treated listeners to the prime of Mikey Dredd, Massive Dub Cuts 1978-1992.